Hello and welcome to my training of how to do whiteboard animation using Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate step by step. Now this is a three-part series. Uh, in part one I will show you how to do whiteboard animation and some illustration techniques within Flash. In part two I'm going to show you how to add animations so that after your, uh, after your illustrations draw on now let's see them blink and move and animate. And in step in part three, we are going to look at advanced techniques, um, adding a hand to draw your illustrations, uh, how to put in custom handwritten fonts, and some advanced techniques of where to use color. Now let me show you what you're going to be learning. These are some animations I've been doing. I've been doing this for a number of years now. So let's start out with this one. I think this is the traditionally known uh, version where a hand draws on quickly. And notice once they draw on they can also do motion graphics or animate. So I'll be teaching you all of these uh, techniques. All of this is done within Flash. So what you need, what you need um, as far as equipment, you need at least a trial version of Adobe Flash and um, that's basically it. Now, now obviously you need a digital camera if you want to do the uh, hand-drawn stuff um, but yeah, you have your phone. So let's get started. Uh, let me show you also another style here. Um, illustration draws on and then there's a little animation. Now in this one um, I personally have been uh, preferring this uh, style a little bit more where there is no hand. Uh, a lot of clients want just a cleaner look. So draws on, blinks, and a little animation. So I'll be showing you these techniques. So let's jump to it. So part one, fire up Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate. Okay, now I'll show you step by step what you need to do. Uh, if you're new to Flash, totally fine. So when you first open it, you'll get this window. Click on ActionScript 3.0. Okay, now when you first open yours up, there's going to be a ton of windows everywhere. You'll only want three to begin with. Okay, so X out all those windows that are everywhere, and you'll need these three. You'll need Library, Color, and Properties. So to find those, if they're not already up, you go up here to Window and you should find the color, um, library, and properties uh, windows there. So uh, I like, you can move these around. I, I like keeping those three together so it's just nice and easy. Um, all right, so let's jump to it. Now, um, in creating your whiteboard animation, you're going to be working with clients. You're going to be starting with a script. So with that script, the first step is to create sketches. So you can uh, do sketches on regular paper or you can uh, draw it within Flash. The uh, benefit of doing it in Flash is it's going to be a huge time sa saver, right? Because it's just digital. Um, I highly suggest using a Wacom tablet. Um, it just makes drawing so much easier. Now I actually don't have mine so I'm going to be drawing with a uh, the trackpad here on, or the touchpad here on the my laptop. But uh, it would be a lot easier if I, I, I left my Wacom at the office. So anyway, I'll do my best. So even if you don't have a Wacom, totally fine. I'm here with you. So the first tool to learn to do these uh, illustrations is the brush tool. Okay, so the shortcut is B. Now if you don't see this toolbar, you can also go to Window and then Tools. Okay, so click on the brush tool. Now, to get your colors, uh, there's a fill a color right here, uh, and there's also a stroke. But when you're drawing with the brush tool, it's just a fill. Um, under your color window, you can also have this nice, uh, nice color um, palette, and you get all the colors you need. Now, how do you do if you want to do um, opacity? In if you're working from if you're used to working in Photoshop, they call it opacity, right? Uh, or transparency. In Flash, it's called alpha. 
and this A right here, 100%, that's the alpha. So if the alpha is 50%, then that's the opacity. All right, now a few things about the brush tool. Let's just get black, and I'm going to change the alpha back to 100 or opacity. Now, uh, watch as I draw. So I'm holding down the mouse button, and as soon as I release, watch what happens. There is an auto smooth that happens. That's actually why Flash is so awesome as a drawing tool. It has this smoothing, auto smoothing function. Now, how do you manipulate that? Uh, with your brush tool selected, under properties, you'll see that there's a smoothing section towards the bottom. And by default, I think it starts out around 50. I personally like this. I like 40 or 50. Now, what does this mean, though? Well, if smoothing is all the way up to 100, the less accurate it will be, but the more Flash will try to analyze it and see how they can smooth those lines. Okay, so that's what the computer model did, and that's what it came up with. Now, if we turn smoothing all the way down to, one, to zero, uh, I'll draw a line, and it'll be uh, as accurate as it can be. So... I honestly like having it at 50, so I suggest keeping it at 50. Now, uh, if, if I want a little bit more accuracy, I'll, I'll put it down about 40. Uh, so feel free to, to mess around with those sections. They're really good. All right, or those settings, sorry. All right, now, uh, how do you, once things are drawn, you know, how do you manipulate things? Now, it has an arrow tool, and you can drag, you can click and drag, and you can select portions of these shapes that you're making, that you're painting on. And if you click once, it'll select the whole shape if it's connected. So if there was a connect, if this was uh, connected to that shape, since it's the same color, let me just change the setting here. If it's the same color, then it'll uh, think that it's all the same shape. And so selecting it once, I can just hit backspace and delete it, or I can select portions of it and delete it. It also has a lasso tool like Photoshop. Uh, L is the is the shortcut. If you want to just select certain parts of it, you can select shapes and you can uh, delete it or modify it. Modify it. All right. So now let's dive into illustrating. So I'm going to just select all this and hit backspace to delete it. Now uh, I'm gonna get a gray. And let's just do a head. Cartoon head, so there's the shape. Okay, now also it's really cool. Uh, to change the size of the brush, uh, you do the uh, forward and backward brackets just like in Photoshop. Okay? It's, um, Anyway, also there's more settings uh, under properties. Um, there's also more settings here uh, with the brush, but we'll get into that, I think, into the advanced advanced uh, side of things in part three. Let's just focus here on the basics. So I'm gonna draw some eyes. Now, if you're using a Wacom tablet uh, or a Wacom tablet, you wanna use pressure. Click this option. Uh, it's not going to work because I don't have my Wacom in, but basically uh, the lighter you press, the thinner the line will be, and if the heavier you press, it'll be thicker. So it's a really awesome option. Um, I wish I didn't forget my, my tablet. So I'm going to just change this smaller here, give him a nice little nose, and a nice mouth. <laughs> All right, let's see all. All right, there we go. And maybe we'll give him some ears. And that's probably good enough. All right, so we have our head. This is going to be our sketch. Now, once you have the sketch finalized, what you're going to do is you're going to group all of it together, and you're going to make what's called a symbol. A symbol is a group of graphics that you combine together and and uh, once you make it a, a symbol it's saved in Flash's library or Adobe Animate's library so let me show you what this what, what it means so I'm gonna 
click and drag and select all of these elements that I want. And I'm going to right click on a portion of it and I'm going to say convert to symbol. Now it also has a keyboard shortcut of F8. Uh, I would highly suggest that you make that keyboard sh shortcut. So go into edit, keyboard shortcuts. If you're in edit preferences, keyboard shortcuts, I believe. Let's see, let me find it. Edit, edit keyboard shortcuts. Awesome. And then it might be in somewhere different if you're on a Mac. All right, so let me select that again. Right click it, and I'm going to say convert to symbol. All right, now, this symbol, we're going to name it something. Let's call this Guy Face. All right, you can name it whatever you want. Now, the type, we want it to be a graphic. So by default, it might be movie clip. Change it to graphic. I'll explain uh, why that's important later on. But once that's there, hit OK. All right, now, once you do that, you'll notice it makes a little square bounding box around it. And if I were to try to erase it, I, I can't erase it. Uh, it does it makes a mark, but then when I release it doesn't do anything. So what happened? Well, we made it into a graphic. If I go into my library here, you can see we have one thing. It's guy face. Awesome. Use count one. So what can I do with this? Well, I can click and drag and put it uh, again anywhere in my uh, in my project so basically saving it to your library makes a copy available anywhere you want so why do we why do we use this well when doing uh, cartoon uh, animation whiteboard animation you're gonna use a lot of the same pieces over and over again uh, for example the eyes uh, maybe you'll just create one eye and you can duplicate that eye and use the same symbol across all of your characters or with the nose or ears. So this is kind of going into puppet animation. Uh, it's a huge time saver. Um, so for example, uh, perhaps your character, when you're animating him, <clears throat> he'll have the same torso and legs the whole time, but then maybe it's just his head or arms that need to change position. You don't want to have to redraw the legs every time you draw the character. So doing, creating symbols out of all of the body parts really is a huge time saver. All right, now let's say you want to resize this. Um, the uh, tool to do it is the free transform tool up here. It's the arrow with the square. The shortcut is Q. All right, so it's a little little different. Now, uh, if you want it to maintain, maintain its uh, proportion, hold down shift. All right, so that's how you uh, transform things. Okay, now, what are we going to do? Well, what we want to do now is the final, let's let's say this is the sketch. Let's say all you're going to do is figure out how to do a whiteboard animation of a head. So this is the sketch. Now, let's do the final illustration on top of it. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go inside of this symbol. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what that means. So, up here, this is our timeline. Oh, now, I, I forgot to mention, your workspace might not look like this. Your timeline might be at the bottom. To get the workspace like I have it, you go to Window, and then you go down to Workspaces, and then you go to Animator. Okay, I think by default it probably goes to Classic. Uh, but yeah, we want to go to Workspaces Animator. Okay? All right. So up here, just like Photoshop, there's layers. So we have one layer, but then we have this timeline here. So that's for animating. We'll get into that, okay? So um, we want to make some edits to this, though. So what we do is to get inside this symbol, to make edits to it, remember we couldn't erase it or anything, like how do we modify it now that it's a symbol? Well, you simply double click it. So once you double click it, notice over here we have our scene one, but then we have guy face. This is our navigation kind of uh, 
I don't know, viewport that tells us where we're at. So actually inside now, we're inside this guy face symbol. If I get my eraser, which is shortcut is E, now I can erase it. Now I can edit it. It actually gives me a custom timeline for that symbol. So uh, this, let's click this button over here, this new layer button. Let's give it a new layer. Now just to show you, if I, I, I can, uh, to get back to the overall scene one, I can get my arrow tool, my selection tool, or V, and I can double click outside of it, and it puts me back in scene one. So double click to go inside a symbol, double click outside of a symbol to get outside of it. All right, let's go back in. Now another way to do it is you can actually just click on scene one, it'll take you back. All right, now if you'll notice though, scene one, has one layer. If I go inside the symbol, now it has the two layers. Okay, so this is its own timeline, its own set of layers. And yes, you can have symbols within symbols, within symbols. And uh, let's just uh, focus though on getting this uh, illustration a little bit more fine tuned. All right, so just like in Photoshop, um, perhaps you have your sketching layer and then you'll do a layer above to get your nice line quality. So let's do the same thing. Let's click on layer one and click on this dot underneath the lock button to lock it. So now that's locked, I can't edit it. Let's go to the layer above and let's do our final line quality on this, okay? So I'm gonna get black, get my brush tool, shortcut is B. I believe if it's going to work here, B, for whatever reason it wasn't, wasn't working. All right, now let's do it. Let's make that a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay, now I'm drawn with my finger, so this is not going to be the best. Ugh, I think the sketch is going to be a little bit nicer than this. All right, oh, thank goodness there's an auto smooth there. All right, now for the eyes, I could draw the eyes, or I could also use these shape tools. Okay, so I'm going to use this oval tool. Whoa, now what is happening there? So why is it looking so crazy? Well, when I draw a shape, let me draw this a little bit bigger, and let me show you here. I'm going to change the fill color if I can here. All right, now when I draw a shape, by default, it also comes with a stroke. So it has a fill and then it has a stroke. Now, why is this stroke so wonky? Well, it's weird because I changed the settings earlier, right? So how do I see those settings? Double click, you have to double click the stroke or it won't select the entire thing sometimes. So double click the stroke and under properties, we're gonna see the stroke settings. So we can change right here the thickness of the stroke, but also the type. See this width, I had changed it to have this nice uh, taper at the beginning and the end of it. I'm gonna change it back to the normal uniform. Okay, so changing it back, it's nice and uniform, great. So to do that to this one, I'm just gonna double click it. I'm gonna go to properties, change it back to the uniform one. Okay, yay! So now actually, uh, now that that's normal, I'm actually going to just delete the stroke so that I just have the fill. Okay? All right. Now this, um, I'm going to zoom in here. To zoom in, uh, the shortcut I like to use is, now I'm on, I'm on a PC, right? So I'm doing spacebar and control and then that gives me plus, and then I just have to click. If I want to do minus, I do space bar, control, alt, and it'll help me go back. You can also change the uh, magnification over here. So if I want to do 200%. Also, another handy tool is the hand tool, H. So with the hand tool, um, you can move your uh, workspace around. Okay, that's very, very handy. Um, all right, now, go back here. Now, I'm going to uh, resize this. So to resize, I'm going to hit Q. 
to my free transform. I'm going to make the eyes a little bit more like that. Awesome. Okay. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make this eye a symbol. Okay, we won't animate it in this part. We'll do that in part two, but we do want to make it a symbol. So I'm pressing F8, or I can right-click it and say convert to symbol. I'm going to call this I. I1, maybe. All right, make sure it's a graphic and hit OK. All right, now I'm going to zoom in here. And a good way to um, use symbols that we want to repeat is to just select it and then press Alt and then drag it. So if I hold down Alt, click and drag, it'll create a copy of it. I could also just select it, hit uh, Command C, Command V, and it'll make a copy of it or, or Command Control. All right, so that's there. Now these are just copies of the same thing. Now let's do the nose. Now, uh, perhaps you wanted to use the pen tool, okay? So pen tool, just like Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, uh, comes with a really nice pen tool. And this can be helpful when you uh, want really nice clean lines. I'm going to select this. I'm going to Library, oh, sorry, Properties. And I'm going to change the stroke to be a little bit thinner. Great. Now, let's say I did want that taper or a different uh, style of stroke. Just go over here. Select which one you want. It's awesome. Okay, I'm also going to make that a symbol. Okay, I'm just going to say nose. Call it nose. Save it. All right, smiley face. Let's use the pen tool again. Actually, let's let's use the oval tool, and then I'll show you uh, oval tool. Now, um, it's so easy to um, modify shapes and strokes and flashes one click and you can edit it so click um, click in the fill delete it now I'm going to select the top half of this uh, or the top portion of this and it kind of changes it right but uh, it kind of resets it's going to make that part kind of separate than that part and I'm going to hit uh, any, and also anytime you see these little dots that means it's selected so I'm going to hit backspace to delete it there, cool. Now I get this nice little shape here. I'm going to use that for the mouth. I'm going to uh, hit Q and I'm going to modify that. Awesome. Now I'm going to hit uh, F8 to make it a symbol and I'll do I'll, I'll name it Smile One. Perfect. All right. So that's there. Okay. Now let me show you a really awesome tool. This is one of the best drawing tools. I believe that Flash has, and that's the, the smoothing tool. Now, you know that there's, I, I already explained that there's a uh, auto, auto smooth uh, when you draw, but what about once things are already drawn? Well, there's a smoothing tool that we can use. Now, you see that the top of his head, it's a little jagged here. I don't, I don't really like that. I uh, want to smooth that portion. I don't want to smooth the whole thing, perhaps, but I want to smooth that portion. So this is how you do it. Um, uh, what you can do is you can select with the lasso tool or just with the selection tool, select the portion you want to smooth. Okay. Now, uh, now to smooth it, you go to modify, then you go to shape, and then you go to smooth. Now I have I have come up with a or I've uh, set a keyboard shortcut to that. I highly suggest you do that. My keyboard shortcut is S makes it really easy to use because I, I use it all the time to make nice clean lines. Okay, now hit smooth. Let's see what it did. Did it do anything? Now, if you want to see what it did, hit uh, Control Z. It did it a little bit. Control Z or uh, Control Y uh, goes uh, backwards or forwards. Now, I wanted to smooth it even more, so I'm going to do it again. But instead of going to that menu, I'm just going to hit S because that's my keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to hit S a couple times. Oh, there it goes. S, S. All right. I clicked it about three times, and look what it did. Hey, it made that nice and smooth. What about this portion right here? Oh, I kind of want to smoothen that transition. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to hit S a few times. It makes it smooth. Now, if you go crazy, let me just select a portion and just hit it a ton. Um, actually, that made that kind of nice. But sometimes maybe it doesn't make it 
how you like it, right? So sometimes you just gotta uh, experiment with the tool, but so powerful, so so powerful. All right, now let's move on. Let's let's smooth uh, another portion of his face, and maybe the top portion here, and maybe that little thing there. Oh man, super handy tool. I love it. I love it so much. All right, now his face. Select his face, and also I'm going to hit F8 to make it a symbol, and I'm going to call it face. All right. Now let's do his ears. Get my brush tool. Get my color to black. Oop. All right, give him some ears here. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit S a couple times. Smoothen that out, maybe. I don't know. Maybe smooth a little bit there. Experiment with the smooth tool. So, so awesome. So great. All right, call it ear. Okay, now I'm going to go over here. I'm, I'm holding down Alt. And okay, now here's another tool. You want to easily, especially with the body, you know, there's it's, it's symmetrical, right? So a lot of things will be the same but flipped horizontally. So with this ear, I want to flip it horizontally. How do I do that? Well, right click, go to, let's see here, transform, and then flip horizontal. Now again, this is another keyboard shortcut you're going to want. I have mine as F1. Um, I've also used the number one before. If your keyboard isn't a full keyboard and your F1 doesn't work, uh, perhaps just make it the number one. But uh, yeah, super, super good um, keyboard shortcut. I use it all the time. So yeah, see that? One click and I'm flipping things horizontally. All right. All right. Now, uh, perhaps I want to make these ears smaller. Now look what happens. If I were to, I could, I could uh, transform the symbol, right? But maybe I want to make them both smaller. So I'm going to double click inside of this ear. Now I can actually edit the, the original, right? And if I were to make this one smaller, then the other one updates, right? Because it's the same symbol. It's the power of symbols. All right. Let's see. Okay. Now, what else? What else? All right. Now, let's delete our sketch. I think, uh, you know, we're done with the sketch. So let's go to the layer one. And we're just going to hit this trash icon to delete it. Okay, now uh, to make this more final, obviously I'd probably add hair, but maybe uh, maybe this guy's bald. Okay, but I do want to add some shadow. So I want to add shadow to this face portion, right? Um, so what I'm going to do first, though, is I want to fill this uh, this shape with white because if I if I drag it over here, it's just a black outline, right? So I want the middle to be white. Um, so I'm going to double click it to edit the original face, right? And I'm going to use my bucket tool, paint bucket tool, shortcut is K, and I'm going to get white. And I'm going to just click inside of it, and it fills it up with white. Now I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to double click outside. Oh wait, I'm back to my face, but I can't see his, I can't see his eyes. Oh wait, there they are. They're behind. Okay, so with these symbols, there, there's an order to them, right? So one's in front of the other. We, that's something always to be um, conscious of. We want this to be in the very back of everything. Um, or at least behind the eyes, nose, and mouth. So to get it behind, you can do right-click it, you can do arrange, and you can say send backward, or you can uh, send to the back. Okay, so sending it backward will will make it go behind one object. Sending it to the back will go will make it go behind everything. Now again. I have created some, I'm not sure if I created these shortcuts or if they're default, but I use these, right? So control shift down arrow uh, helps me do a short, quicker way to do it. All right, so send it to the back. Awesome. Now these ears actually as well, I'll probably want to fill those with, uh, with white 
uh, but at least for now I'm just going to shift click both of them so both of them are selected and I'm going to send both of them to the very back so I'm going to do control shift down arrow and now they're behind they're behind the face okay all right now let's add some shadow to this guy I'm going to double click inside of the face and I'm going to click on the fill color uh, icon here. Now I like using these grays, these default grays. Uh, I'm going to use this one just above the white first. And I'm going to hit my B button. I don't know why it's not working on this laptop. Anyway, you should be able to work. All right, so B. Now I want to do a shadow on the left side of his face, uh, but I want it to like touch and I don't want to have it ruin my line quality so how do I how do I do that right now this is another amazing tool you're gonna to use it all the time if you're illustrating in flash all right so it's up here under brush mode if you click that once you might have to click and hold it down you're gonna see there's paint normal paint fills paint behind paint selection and paint inside let's do the paint inside uh, option so what does that mean? Well, let me zoom in here. Now basically it means wherever I start painting, it's going to stay within that region. So if I start painting inside this line, it's not going to let me paint outside. Now as long as it's an enclosed shape, right now this white, or even if this was blank, because uh, it's an enclosed uh, shape, if I start painting inside of it, I won't be able to paint outside of it. So let me show you what it looks like. So first let me show you on the line. If I start painting this gray inside, I started painting inside, even though I'm going outside the line, when I release the mouse, it just captures what I painted inside. Okay, so let me do it for the side of his face. I start painting inside. I can overlap it. And then when I release, it just keeps uh, the keeps it inside. Okay, now to fill the rest of this up, I'm just going to get my paint bucket tool. I'm going to click. Awesome. I like that. Now let's let's double click outside of it and see how it looks. Okay, cool. A little shadow for you, Mr. Guy. Oops. Ugh. I've done some crazy scroll thing. Sorry about that. All right. So, um, okay, now let's say, though, that that little shadow I want to uh, make a little smoother. Again, just select. Uh, perhaps I'm happy with this outside edge. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll just look what happens. If I, if I select this whole thing, just click once, and I hit my S uh, thing a couple times, not only will it smoothen the gray portion, but it'll also smooth the, um, the black portion. Uh, outline that it's touching okay if I didn't want it to do that I would just select get my my lasso tool I would just select this edge and then hit uh, S a few times to smoothen that out okay the power of that smooth tool is awesome okay now let's uh, let's uh, do the whiteboard animation for this thing what do you guys think I think that sounds great. So uh, let's talk a little bit about whiteboard animation here and animation in general. So in Flash, uh, it is set up to do 24 frames per second. Okay, that's how many frames we see in one second of animation. Right now, there's just one keyframe. And it doesn't animate, it just is stagnant. It's a still a still image. So in Flash we have the power to animate which is awesome. So uh, there's three uh, tool, uh, three buttons that you need to, to memorize in, in Flash. Excuse me. They are F5, F6, and F7. So what do they do? Well this up here is the timeline and this little black dot is a keyframe. A keyframe contains all the image, all the uh, 
it's imagery, I don't know, it's everything inside a frame is the keyframe, okay? So I want this, though, to actually uh, play, right, to animate, to draw on. So we need room for that to draw on. Uh, how long do we need? I mean, let's say we want two seconds. Maybe in two seconds we want this guy's face to draw on. So if there's 24 frames per second, well, then we need two of those, right? So we need 24 times 2, which is 48. So we need 48 frames to get two seconds of animation. So how do we make this keyframe longer? Well, that is our tool of F5. So when you hit F5, if you click on the keyframe and hit F5, what it will do is it will add a it will add a frame to your keyframe or in other words it'll add time to your keyframe so um, so a keyframe is uh, basically what's there inside the frame but then uh, one keyframe could have 48 frames right uh, so if I keep on hitting F5 It'll extend, or it'll add frames to my keyframe. It'll add time to my keyframe. Okay, so I clicked it a bunch of times, and uh, right here it shows me how many's there. It says 49. Well, I just want 48. So how do I get rid of that extra room that I made? Well, select select the, uh, the uh, one of the frames, and to to subtract a frame you hit shift F5, okay? So add a frame, F5, subtract a frame, shift F5. Okay, so now I can press to play this, I hit enter and it'll play it. And it even says two seconds, wow. So uh, yeah, our illustration's there and it's not doing anything but it exists for two seconds in time, awesome. So, now what do we do from here? Well, we want this to draw on. So now I'm going to show you the secrets of whiteboard animation. How do I get my drawing to draw on? What's cool, though, too, if, if you're not a, an artist, if, you're not, uh, if you don't draw, you can go and buy or have illustrators you know, draw you things that you want and then you can teach them this technique, or you can do this technique yourself. Um, so basically, now with a finished drawing, we will apply the whiteboard drawing on effect to it. All right, so what we do, what we're going to do, is we're going to work backwards. We're going to have the final piece, and then we're going to erase little portions of it at a time, and then we're going to reverse it so that it starts out with nothing and then it's going to build piece by piece to create the finished illustration. All right, so this is how we do it. The next tool, the next uh, yeah, tool I'm going to teach is F6. So what does F6 do? F6 creates a new keyframe. So a, a new keyframe means there's new information, right? It's not just an, uh, it's not just a new frame. It's a new keyframe that has a change to it, new information in it. All right, so there's one keyframe now, but now we're going to go go to frame number two, select it on the timeline there, and we're going to hit F6. Okay, so now I know that it's a keyframe because a new black dot was made. So now we can change things and it'll be different. So if I were to click and drag this eye over here, uh, well, let's, uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to frame one and look. It's back to what it was. It has, I'm going to hit enter and the eye moves. And the eye stays moved for all this time. Okay. Now, if I don't want that change, how do I undo a keyframe? Well, we hit shift and we do F6. So basically shift does the opposite of those, right? So I'm gonna select the keyframe and I hit shift 
I'm going to hit F6, and it's gone. So F6, new, free, new keyframe, F, shift F6, uh, clear uh, keyframe. Okay, so now let's just get down to, let's do the whiteboard animation, okay? So uh, I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to click on the, the frame number two. I'm going to hit F6. And now uh, what I want to do is I want to start erasing, right? Uh, so this is the strategy I like to do. <clears throat> Uh, let's say, uh, let me go back to the an animation here, a whiteboard animation. So I like it to draw the kind of the outline first, and then I like to draw the inside, and then I like it to kind of do the shading at the very end. Okay, so I have to kind of think backwards now. So the last thing I want it to draw on is the shading. So in our purposes, we're going to start erasing the shade first. And then uh, I think we'll go to the mouth and the nose and the eyes, the ears. And then the last thing we'll erase is the outline of the, outline of the face. And uh, then we're going to reverse that so that it starts out uh, with the face. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. So first we want to erase the shadow. So if I get my erase tool um, and I start trying to erase, oh, I, I can't erase it. Well, what's the problem? Well, what it's doing is it's a symbol, right? And as long as it's a symbol, we can't really directly edit it. So how do we get around this? You know, because we, we want to create things that are symbols. Uh, that, are, that make it easy to organize things, but then when we're actually doing the whiteboard animation, we want to edit it directly right here all together. So um, there's a couple strategies. Now, one is we could do this. We could do whiteboard animation inside each individual symbol, which actually is a is is a good idea to do. Um, but another way of doing it is we can break apart. And I think I'm going to do that first. It's the simpler way to show. And in the more advanced uh, section, uh, probably in, in uh, part two, we'll do individual pieces. Um, but uh, just for simplicity's sake, let's just you know, show you how to do this. So uh, let's break apart everything. So what does it mean to break something apart? Well, um, if I just duplicate this eye and I right click it and I go up here to break apart, and click it, it'll basically um, make it get out of its symbol. Um, it breaks the link to, to its symbol. And now I can erase this. Now once you break it apart, it's not linked to the symbol. So if I erase this, it won't affect the symbol that's already saved in the library, which is good. Okay, so I've created a sh uh, keyboard shortcut for breaking things apart. Mine is Control B. Uh, if you want to do something similar, I, I highly suggest it. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just click on the keyframe up in the timeline, and when I do that, it selects everything, everything that's in that keyframe. So I want everything selected, and I'm going to break everything apart so that I can edit it. So I'm going to hit con I can right click and say uh, uh, break apart or I can hit my shortcut. Okay, now everything is just shapes. Everything is just shapes. There's no symbols here. But in keyframe one, it's all saved. That's key. We want to save the symbols in the first keyframe. And I'll explain that in part two. Why? All right. So, uh, all right, now I can, I can edit this. I can, er I can erase things. Let's see here. I think. Yeah, there we go. I can erase it, and it actually erases. Awesome. Now, let me show you another awesome tool. Just like the paint inside uh, brush tool, there is an erase inside brush tool, which comes in, s in very handy. All right, so what we're going to do, here's the strategy. We're gonna now we're going to do another new keyframe. So we're gonna hit F6. 
Now you noticed I didn't have to click on the next frame and then click F6. I'm just going to Control Z. Basically, uh, if if your um, I don't even know what this is called. This your navigator up here. If it's on uh, one and I hit F6, it automatically knows that I want to create a new one on the next frame. So it'll just do it for me. So it's super nice. So now when we want to add new keyframes, we just hit F6. Or feel free if you want to create a keyboard shortcut for another uh, another keyboard uh, uh, keystroke to, to do that. So now I'm going to get my eraser tool. And over here, I'm going to change the eraser options to erase inside. Okay. Now uh, I can erase this. Uh, which will make it white, or I could also paint it white. I could either paint it white or erase it. Uh, just depending on what you want, um, either one would work, right? So in this one, I'll just I'll just use the eraser for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to start. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to start erasing from down here. And I'm going to click, and as long as I click inside of that gray area, even though I'm going outside the uh, the gray area into the black portion, when I uncheck, un unclick, it'll it'll just erase inside because we we chose that erase inside mode. Okay, so the strategy is we're going to erase a part, and then we're going to hit F6 to create a new frame. And then we're going to erase another part. Now you might be asking, well, how how much do I know? How do I know how much to erase? There's no clear answer on that, right? So you're just going to have to experiment by how much you want erased. Um, yeah, we'll just 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 start somewhere, and you'll just see what I do, and uh, and you'll see. Now. now how do we, what, is there an easy way of seeing what I did before? Yes. Uh, on the keyboard, there's the uh, right and left. Uh, they're not arrows, but they're those kind of pointer arrows. The comma and the period. Yeah, comma and the period. So the comma goes back on the timeline, a frame, and the period goes forward. Okay, so now I can already see uh, if, uh, as I go to the next keyframe, okay, that's what it erased. So now I'm going to hit F6 and I'm going to erase a little bit more. F6, erase a little bit more. You can even use your arrow tool to, to select bigger portions of it. Now a really handy tool, I'm not sure if I already showed you it, I think I did, is the hand tool. Uh, click it to move around, which is great. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to use my comma tool just to make sure that I'm on the right one. Okay, so I made a change, and now I need to set a new keyframe, and then I'll make I'll select that and erase it. All right, let's see what we got so far. Let's hit uh, let's hit play here. I'm going to go back to the beginning and uh, get my hand here. And I'm going to hit enter. Ooh, all right. So it erased the shadow. Awesome. All right. Let's uh, let's continue on here. Let's now erase the. Hmm, let's do the ears. So I'm gonna hit F6. I'm gonna get my eraser. I'm gonna erase a portion of it. Huh. Oh, it didn't erase because I'm on the erase inside. Now if I want to change that back, I'll go to erase normal because I had started outside of it. But I want to do it just erase normal so that I can uh, start on the outside and also go inside. So I'm going to erase it, hit F6, erase some more. Oh yeah. Now you notice, see how it kind of, it's, it's not a perfect erase, right? I, I kind of made a mistake. So that's where erasing, or doing this erase whiteboard technique in each individual part is beneficial. It kind of makes a cleaner thing, uh, but we'll do that in part. I'll show you how to do that in part two. All right, so let's see where I'm at. I'm, I'm using a, a comma and, and period to see where I'm at. Okay, so I erased it. Now I need to set a new keyframe, and I'll erase this ear. Hit F6, erase. 
All right, now uh, let's do the mouth. F6. I'll do a two-stroke, two-framed mouth draw, perhaps. Okay, let's do the nose next. F6, erase a portion. F6, erase another portion. F6, let's do the eyes now. Do half the eye. F6, erase. Isn't this fun? Now, what's cool is once your drawing's done, you can just kind of unplug and listen to music, listen to an audiobook, and it just goes by fast. Okay, so now that's that's done. Now let's do the outline of the head. So let's say if I were to really draw this in real life, I'd start over here, I'd go up, and I I go down. So I'm going to go the opposite. So I'm going to let's see here. So good. So now I'm going to go right here, erase a portion. Hit F6, erase a portion, F6. I'm going to get my hand tool so that I can see the bottom part of this. Where am I at here? Okay, now I need to erase a little bit of it. Now, uh, one, one tool will be come in handy is, let, let's say you want your brush to be bigger. You know, it's like, ugh, it's, it's too small. Uh, your your I can't remember if I explained this already, but your forward and backward uh, bracket, just like Photoshop, will change the size of your brush. But sometimes that even doesn't get it big enough. You know, maybe I want this really big brush. So to get uh, to change the option even more with your brush tool selected or your eraser tool, go to properties and this option right here zoom size with stage so with that check marked um, if I were to uh, so I have a brush right now right so I, I click and that's ugh, that's how big the dots are right if I were to zoom out a little bit um, and I did clicks I, I clicked it it's roughly the same the same size right but if I uncheck that option, let's see, did it work? Hmm. Yeah, it worked. So unchecking that option makes it so that your brush gets bigger the further you zoom out. It's kind of confusing. But uh, anyway, that's just an option to get your brush a little bit bigger. So... Uh, if you are if you're new to Flash, by default it just acts normal. But if you've been using Flash for a while, um, it's always acted like that. It's always gotten bigger if you've zoomed out, which is nice sometimes. Sometimes it's not nice. All right, so F6, erase, and see it's gotten a little bit bigger, which is nice. The size is right here. It's biggest it can go. So if I wanted to zoom out even more, I think I can even get it even bigger. Okay, portion. F6, erase, there we go. I'm liking the size of that eraser now. So zoom out further to get it bigger. And one more piece, we're going to erase it. Now, uh, perhaps I missed a piece, right? Perhaps there was a little straggling little thing there. How do I know? Well, um, if I click up here in the timeline, um, it selects everything that's in the keyframe, right? And if I click it, look, it has those, I'm not sure if you can see it, but all these dots are selected. You know, there's stuff there. It's white, so it's invisible because the background's white, but it's still there. So by default, I like, on the last one, I like to just select the keyframe by clicking it and hitting backspace so that I know everything is deleted. Now look, when there is a keyframe that doesn't have anything in it, it gives you a blank circle and... The frames within that keyframe are, 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 they have a darker gray. And that's a sure sign that there's absolutely nothing within that keyframe. All right, so now we have it. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's go back to the beginning. And let's hit, let's hit uh, enter. Oh, yeah. And you see it goes all the way. We, we made this 48 seconds long, so it goes and then it stops. If you were to hit enter again, it just goes back to the beginning. 
Okay, so now we have it erasing. Now we want to reverse this so that it looks like it's drawing. If we if we just take the if we just click this little navigator line thing, I don't know what it's called, and we were to go backwards, we could see that oh yeah, it looks like it's drawing on. Awesome. Okay, now how do we do the magic? How do we make it? So this this is how we do it. We uh, we select from the blank key. See, do I want to do it that way? Hmm. Sorry, just thinking out loud here. Let's do one more keyframe here, if that's okay. Select one more keyframe and then hit F6 so that we just have one more blank keyframe. Okay, so we'll have the last one be nothing and then we'll have one more that's nothing. What I want to do is select from uh, the second to last keyframe all the way to the first one. So you get to kind of click and drag to select the range. So with all of those selected, what we want to do is reverse them. So to do that, we go to Modify, we go to Timeline, and we say Reverse Frames. A good friend of mine, uh, Matt Watts, he, uh, he's the one that showed me this. I had no idea how to do it, but he, f he found that out for me. So once I found this out, I was like, oh, yes! I was doing whiteboard animation uh, by hand or a different way. Uh, and this just totally was a game changer. So this is how you do it. It's, uh, it's just a click of a button, so it'll change your life. So click, <laughs> changed mine. Absolutely it did. So thank you, Matt. All right, now uh, click it, and it reverses it. And uh, yeah, hit hit enter. Oh, oh yeah. So it draws it on. If you click and drag, it draws it on. And then it disappears. Well, it disappears because we add another blank keyframe. So what we want to do is click that blank key, uh, blank keyframe, and we want to clear it. So to clear it, we do Shift F6. And then it holds. It holds on that last keyframe. And that last keyframe was the one that had the symbols uh, still intact and it, and it uh, keeps it for the rest of your two seconds. So that's it. That is the basic whiteboard animation secret. And with that alone, with that alone, you guys could be so powerful, such a powerful tool. Um, now, uh, just a few things here now though. The guy face, it's 48 frames long. If we were to click to scene one, uh, there's nothing there. Well, there's nothing there because inside of uh, the, the first frame in the guy face whiteboard animation is blank. So what we need to do if we want to see it on the master uh, side is we need to extend these key fr these frames so that it's at least two seconds. So what I can do is I can click and I can drag up to 48 and I can hit F5 so it'll extend the amount of time that's in there, and uh, and it, well, we can see our, our our whiteboard animation. So awesome! So now I can press enter. He draws on, and then it stops at two seconds. Now, just uh, another cool thing. Uh, you know what? Uh, let me get to it. To in step two. So now you've know you know the secrets to whiteboard animating, the basics. Now in step two, I'm going to show you uh, how to add some more animation to this. We're going to make his eyes blink at least and maybe we'll, we'll have his head nod or something. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you in in step two. So thank you and I'll see you in a bit.